let's kind of start from the beginning. Where did you grow up? Compton. City of Compton. Okay. Born and raised. Uh, at what point did you start doing music? Um, well, I used to be in the, the band, marching band. Okay. In yeah. 11th grade, I was playing the drums, and then 12th grade, I was a drum major. And okay. I was like, but that was cool, you know, catching the girls and all that. Right. But I always was a drummer. Yeah. I just got on the drum one day and just started playing. It's just natural. Natural. You never took no lessons totally or natural. nothing? Never. Okay. Mm -mm. Okay. And just, at the high school, just DJing. Started, you know, just started you never thought about dj right just got into that a buddy of mine got me into that and just just started djing so being in the club and just and that's when i met dre you know i was already in the club maybe a year or more okay at least i was like the top dj you know at the prime time spot 12 o'clock at night okay on the weekend so it was just that's how it all started just dj wasn't music but no kind of music wasn't even thinking about music Right. Actually, we weren't thinking about music until we seen Run DMC. Okay. You know, they did their little 10-minute show the first time they came to L.A. And just, me and Dre just like, hmm. That's it? <laughs> you know, they do they two, because only Sucker MCs was out. Yeah. It was 10 minutes, and they threw the mics down at the end. And I'm like, wow, we can do that. Okay. That's where the start was right there. Okay, so, so you and Dre hooked up. Just hanging out in the club. Oh, yeah. You were the DJ. Well, well, we both were DJs. You both were DJs. I was the DJ first. Ah. Then he came along. So he was usually the, the more popular DJ comes on later. No. No? The popular DJ comes on usually at 12 o'clock. Okay. It was somebody under, it was before me, then me, the prime spot is 12 to 2, then Dre came on afterwards. Okay. To the, close the, it up. Oh, the, the clubs were closing after 2 back then? Yeah, oh, yeah. It okay. closed about 3, 3.30, okay, something yeah. like that. It was a... Uh, 18 and under, so it wasn't adults. Oh, okay. Adults. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No alcohol there was no alcohol. There. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you and Dre were both DJs, and, you know, how did the, really the relationship form at that point? Um, I guess we just gelled. You know, we just hang out together, go everywhere together. I had the car, of course, you know. <laughs> you know meeting girls together, you know, that we were just like brothers. Okay. You know, I had a big family, but I wasn't close to my brother because everybody's older than me so. yeah we were just like brother just i mean tight as you see him you see me everywhere okay. i mean that's how we were we were okay. tight now at what point did the whole world-class wrecking crew thing come together well that was actually that was the time of the wrecking crew because when i was djing the club and the club was the wrecking crew that that's who the djs was so uh -huh. that's so, how I, when he finally came to dj i had already been in the wrecking crew a year plus, you know, two year DJing already. Yeah. So when he came in, you know, we started DJing and DJing. Then we seen how easy it was to do music. And that's where we just started right there. Both. So it was all, all at one time. Interesting. So the Wrecking Crew was a DJ crew that started yeah, putting out records. It, yeah. Okay. Now who was sort of the, the main musical um, force behind the Wrecking Crew? Me we and Dre. You and Dre. Me and Dre did all, you know, from Wrecking Crew to Ruthless, all that. Okay. We did everything. Okay. But yeah, we started, you know, making songs first, you know. You know, slow songs back then was the slow songs. Sure. Fast, you know, the techno, whatever they call it yeah, back then. The, the, during the... Planet Rock, that the, kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, during the Egyptian Lover yeah. Kind of phase yeah. Uh, Same of thing. L.A. Yeah, no, I, I definitely remember that. Oh, I, was, yeah. I, I love the music back then. <laughs> Twilight 22, like yeah, all, yeah. That, oh, yeah. all that type oh, of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, the outfits... We're, we're, we're pretty outlandish back then. You know something? I look at them and laugh today. You know, I'm just like, wow, did we? But it was for the women. It wasn't for the guy. It wasn't trying to be hard. We was trying right. to look sexy for right. the women. It was all about the women. Okay. We wasn't making no money, so it was all about the women. It was all about getting the girls after the show. Oh, yeah, that's it. So so you were trying to impress them with the, with the oh, sparkly. Yeah. That's it. That's it. It's just the look. Trying to be sexy. You know, that was the look. If you look at all kind of groups back in, that was the look. The prince. Yeah. Time, you know, all that was that trying to appeal to the women. They yeah, didn't like, care about the guys. Okay. Um, whose idea was it to, to wear the outfits, though? You know something? I really don't know. Wasn't my idea, but, you know, it was just, <laughs> we just wore But back then, it was okay. It was cool. It looked, at, you know, it was okay for it. It's that time. Back okay. Then. So, so you guys put out one album? The Wrecking Crew put out two albums. Two albums. In a, few uh, 12 inches. Okay. So what ultimately 
caused you guys to leave the wrecking crew? Or the well, because the wrecking crew, I mean, did it just fall apart completely, or did no, you, no, no? We we was doing record. We did the first album, then we did a couple of sing, you know, twelve inches. Then we got to deal with Epic. Okay. You know that was big time back then. You know, still but is then big time. <laughs> we got lost up in the shuffle. Nothing happened with that album. Mm -hmm. Then we came back and we did the last song called "Turn Off the Lights." Yeah. That's when it went big. Yeah. Well, nowadays viral. It got big, but when that song came out, we was done. We was gone. The group was oh, over. Oh, so you guys weren't supporting the song? Yeah, we 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 never performed off of it or anything. Oh. So me and Dre, we left the group there. But we went right into the Boys in the Hood that era, right? Okay. There. So so you and Dre left the Wrecking Crew. Yeah. The other there was what like two or three other members. Well, it was um. It was, always was four members, mm -hmm. but it was two different fours. The original <laughs> was clientele, me and Dre and Lonzo. Yeah. But then the epic deal came along. Clientele didn't come back when we originally left. We kind of, I wouldn't say left, boycotted, yeah. but he didn't come back. Then the epic deal happened. Then we picked up a guy named Shakespeare, which was rapping with Cube and his little group. Mm. So, CIA. Well, it wasn't CIA until after he left the group, came with us, then they called themselves CIA. It was called something else. Okay. But they that was the little group. You and Dre left the Wrecking Crew. Yeah. Um, what happened next? Then we, um, seemed like we just jumped off this ship and just jumped right into the, the bigger ship. You know, it, okay. just, it just happened that fast. We just started doing shows. For, for boys in the hood and stuff, and it just started to pick up little by little. Okay, so at what point did you did you guys meet Easy? Um, right towards the end of NWA. Okay. Well, Dre already knew him from the neighborhood. I didn't know him. Maybe the last year of the Wrecking Crew or something. He start, you know, we started talking to him and coming around and stuff like that. So it just it just seemed like it all happened. <laughs> it just didn't click. Yeah. So, so when you met Easy originally, mm -hmm. what was your impression? Who was this short guy? Because <laughs> <laughs> he thought, wasn't a rapper. You okay. know, he was this short guy that made money on the streets. Right. That's what he was. You know, he had the nice clothes and the gas and all the feelers and all that stuff. You know, when you had money back then, that's what you wore. Right. And we didn't have it, of course. Right. He had it. <laughs> oh, yeah. At what point did... Did that whole NWA, Boys in the Hood, you know, like the posse and everything else like that start to come together? Um, well, it was right. It was still, we are still in the wrecking crew, but the song that got worked on, The Boys in the Hood, because, you know, originally it was for somebody else from New York and stuff. Boys in the Hood. Yeah, they didn't want to do it. Wait, wait, so Boys in the Hood was for a New York rapper oh, yeah, originally? Was, yeah, yeah. Who? For a New York uh, group called HBO. HBO. Yep, and they thought they were just, to whatever to do it. So, it wasn't their style. So HBO, who we've never heard of again, yeah, yeah, never <laughs> turned heard down of. the song that launched yep. NWA. Yeah. But I think if they would have did it, it would never did nothing. Yeah, it was, it was a different vibe, obviously. Yeah. Okay, so so who wrote that song? Q. Ice Cube wrote the lyrics. Oh, yeah. And who did the beat? Um, Dre made the beat because I wasn't, at that particular time, I had to go work. To the record, we weren't making no money, so I said, I'm gonna get me a job. I'm gonna get me a job. <laughs> okay, so they end up doing what, what, what boys. Were you, what were you hood. doing? What was your job? Valet, you were a valet, a valet for <laughs> three months. I had never done that. I remember pink shirt, pink bow tie. I'm just like, and beige pants, you know, beige pants. There with you, you, know just, uh. <laughs> you know what's so crazy about it? The hotel I worked at, I told myself, I'm gonna come back here one day. Maybe a year, two years later, we had a meeting with end up, you know, at NWA in that hotel. That same hotel. I was just like, wow. Did you valet, did you valet your car? <laughs> <laughs> and I probably tipped them pretty good too. Uh, okay. I <laughs> okay. So so Dre produced Boys in the Hood. Yeah. Oh yeah. And Ice Cube wrote the lyrics. Yeah. Why was Easy rapping on? It? He made them. You know, the guys. I guess you know they turned it down. So you know, like, gotta do something with this. You know, the beat is there, the lyrics is here, so, and he wasn't a rapper, so, you know, that took a nightmare, two days to record, I'm quite sure, line uh, by line. Yeah, I heard Easy was really offbeat. Oh, no, he just, he wasn't a rapper. He was not a natural rapper. That's okay. all it was, so, he had to be coached. Okay, but why? But he had the sound. 
the sound of his voice. The voice was definitely dope. I mean, but why, why didn't Ice Cube do the song himself? You know something? I don't know. Never asked. <laughs> I guess it just never It's not like Ice Cube's up. not a rapper. It's it not just, like Ice Cube don't have the voice. Yeah, it just, it just never came up. I don't know why. It, how, how could it never come up? This, this doesn't make any sense right now. Yeah. He wrote the song. Oh, yeah. He is a rapper. Yeah. He went on to become a huge rapper. Yeah, he was big from the beginning, he really. He didn't write that one. I don't know why he didn't rap that one. Hey, you know something? That's a good question. That's the first time anybody ever asked that question. <laughs> and there is really no reason. Now, I guess they was so hung up that the group was going to do the, you know, the HBO group was going to do it, and they didn't do it, so just looked at him, I guess. It's amazing. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so it took two days for Easy to do it. Oh, yeah, probably well, I mean, a good well, day. Or... What, what was Easy's first reaction when you said, hey, we want you to, to rap on this song? Oh, it was just, you know, he ain't a rapper. You know, <laughs> I don't rap, you know. Just, just like asking me, I don't rap. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So it just, it was just a, who, why me? Well, who's, whose idea was it to even put him on the song? It had to be Dre. It had to be so Dre. So Dre heard his voice and said, this, this is going to work. I don't know if he heard the voice. I don't know exactly why you pick him but he never rapped before so that he was his never first rapped time before rap, so it just it was meant to happen that way that's all it was well and, you know and i'm sure once you heard the final product it was like oh yeah. okay oh, yeah. you guys knew right away yeah i mean we didn't know it was gonna go big but we knew it was something different it was different from what we was doing and it just it was a sound and just talking about the streets and it just and it was cussing you know, we never made songs with cussing on it before, and it just, it just all clicked. I mean, it's just like somebody building a motor, and they just all put the right parts together. Okay, so Boys in the Hood comes out, starts to circulate, I think, like, what, K-Day started to play yeah, it, yeah, and, you K-Day. know, stuff like that. Um, what, what really was the tipping point, though, from it being, you know, a hot local song to being, you know, like... You had a lot I think of, that's a lot of what groups. it was. It was because it was getting played. I guess they had a little a certain time of the day. They call in, and that was always number one hmm. every day. So that was peop- the number one song every day. The people were were, yeah. were saying they wanted always to hear it. just number one, number one. It just and it just start catching. You know, so just start picking up and picking up. Right, because it was all underground. You know, right. No, no, no I, I was living. I was living mm-hmm. in the Bay Area. Yeah. Okay. And. You know, like Star Records and yeah. all those other places. Like, I, I remember one of my, you know, suburban white friends played it for me. Oh, okay. I was like, yo, listen to this. And it was like, <laughs> yo, what, the, what is this? Yeah, it was like... It was I never like, heard the term motherfucker before. Yeah. Like, like y'all, y'all really own motherfucker. <laughs> like, you know, you would... <laughs> I mean, that was a, that's a natural word in the ghetto. I mean, it's a natural word. Yeah. But it's just... That's what it was. It was so different. It just shocked people, you know... Even ghetto people are shut like, are they really <laughs> talking like that, about that, on a record? Okay, so the song started to get big. Well, what happened next? Um, well, it started to get big, then we came out with another single. Which was? I think it was Gangsta Gangsta. Gangsta Gangsta. Yeah. yeah. Which had Ice Cube on it. Yeah. And I think, wasn't the cover a white dude shining that like, was Ice Cube the, shoes uh, or something? That was after we got picked up by Priority. Okay, no, first but it was just kind of like, like a yeah, white label kind of. Yeah, it was just, uh, just the, the, the print. The Ruthless. It, it said okay. Ruthless on the sleeves. Okay. So, so Ruthless was already company back then? No, it started all that started at the same time. Okay. When the record, it all came out. But see, the thing about Easy was he never wanted to be on somebody's label. He wanted to, his own label distributed. Most people weren't thinking like that back then. They just wanted to be on the label. Explore. Like when we got on Epic, we just wanted to be on Epic. Yeah. But see, being on, having your own stuff, you got more control. Okay. So Easy was. He was, was big. Like, it was, was ahead of the game. Was thinking, yeah. That's what it was. Not to be on somebody. Because we actually tried to be on a label, Island Records. As NWA. Yeah. They didn't want us. <laughs> okay. And Priority came and got us. Right. But the Priority was a distribution deal. Yeah. Right. I mean, but. We were trying to be on Island. Okay. I remember that. We even did a little showcase for them. <laughs> oh, really? NWA <laughs> and did a showcase? And they did not want us. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. So, well, was Jerry Heller around during this time or no? 
Jerry came, Jerry came around the end of the Wrecking Crew, right? The near end. Okay. So at the time... That well, actually, I don't know if Jerry... No, no, he came after the epic deal. So he came towards the end. Okay. So Boys in the Hood was already out and Jerry was already in the mix. Kind of. Like, it's almost all around the same Kind of around time. the same time. Okay. Yeah. So at that point, Easy basically felt that he needed someone experienced in the music business oh, to I help mean, out in this process. Well, you know, he knew more stuff. He'd been around. He was dealing with a lot of big groups in the 70s. Yeah. In the 60s or whatever that was. And he just, he knew the game. Yeah. You know, because it was a totally different game back then. So he just knew it and knew how to get to priority. Okay. Oh, so he helped facilitate that original deal. I mean, they wanted us, but he knew how to get in the door and stuff like that. So. Okay. All right. So, so you guys put out, put out Boys in the Hood and Gangster Gangster independently. Well, like uh, maybe eight ball. That was a eight ball kind of okay. like right because originally there was the album N.W.A. and the Posse. Yeah. What happened to the Mexican dude with the forty ounce? Is he uh, Crazy D? Crazy D. He's still around. I seen him on Facebook. Yeah. Seen him on Facebook. Yeah. Okay. I seen him on Facebook. <laughs> he he didn't go on though to, to have the, the success. Of oh the, no no he he, okay. he didn't probably he didn't rap no more none of that right stuff. Yeah. <laughs> okay so N.W.A. and the Posse came out that was before the Priority deal right that was. Kind of before it, but it, after the album, then they made that into an album. Right, because they took some of the songs they made off that, that and put it on. Yeah, they made that into another yeah. separate album. Okay, so <laughs> so N.W.A. and the Posse, it was a bunch of dudes on there. Yeah, Doc, the DLC the was there. was there. It was all kind of people, yeah. But right. Doc wasn't on the picture. On the picture was a lot of other people. Who are they? Um, kind of... I don't, I don't want to say nobody's, but, you know. <laughs> Only one that I know that did big rapping was front guy leaning with his foot in a green shirt, maybe Candyman. Oh, right. Yeah, Candyman. Well, hold on. That was I'm, him I'm gonna, on I'm the cover. I'm going to pull this out. <laughs> uh, that was him on the down on the right side. Right. Sure That's was. Candyman. Yep. And that was before he made, you know, had his little hit. You know, the little one hit or whatever. It was. Where, where are you on here? I wasn't there. I you was were, sick that day. <laughs> that's the that's the only picture I've ever missed. I was sick that day. You missed, day. I mean, you couldn't come in on a sick day to Man, do I the, the cover had. of your, well, not your first album, but, yeah, it was you just, know, your first big album, I guess. Yeah, it was just, yeah, weird. That was the only one I missed. I was just, I was, I, it was like food poison or something. Okay. Something where you ain't going. But your name's on here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm saying. That was really put together after... Priority deal. Right. Uh, Arabian Prince, pa- Pappenstein? Uh, Rappenstein? Rappenstein, my bad. Yeah. It's, it's kind of blurry here. Rappenstein yeah. ran the Feel a Fresh crew. Yeah. Because Rappenstein rapped on, I think, the B side of A Ball. Okay. Or uh, one of them, yeah. Dr. Rock, Doc T, Fresh K. You know, Ice Cube is like damn near at the bottom of this list. Right. He's almost last. And then <laughs> Rendezvous. Ron, yep. yep. Interesting. Interesting. Easy's first, Dr. Dre second. Yeah. Huh. Okay. So this album came out and it has, I remember it had some of the same, I think like Gangster Gangsters on there, Eight Balls on there. Um, yeah, they end up putting, you know, some of the singles on Okay. There. Okay. Um, but I remember things were sort of buzzing on an underground level, mm-hmm. but then when Straight out of Compton, the album came out. Yeah. Then but it, that was it, still underground. We didn't get no radio play, no video, none of that. It was still underground. But the name came above the ground. Okay. It sure did. But if we wasn't on no, you know, we even though we made a, a radio version album of that, you know, so it can get in Kmart and stuff like that. Right. But we never, we had no video play. You know, I always complain about. Yo, MTV we, raps. But we didn't, video. they didn't play it. They banned us. They, they played, um. They start express, playing express, later. Express yeah. yourself. But the first one, that's what that's what blew us up is when they banned straight out of Compton video. We spent I remember we spent a hundred thousand dollars on that video. Why the name NWA? Who came up with that? You know some it's a guy named Yomo. Yomo he was a rapper Rocky. back then. Yeah. Yeah. He he came up with that name. Cause me and Dre, we were at one of Dre's commercial for Chrysler, I remember. And Yomo, they asked, we said, man, where did it? And Yomo came up with the name. 
Sure did. What did you What did you think? You know, I mean, like you hear, you know, now it's like a very, you know, established term. But mm-hmm. the first time you heard NWA, I was, well, <laughs> back then we wouldn't say what it meant. But you, but you we would not say what it meant most of the time. Oh, really? If we in person, you know, people say, "What did that mean?" You know, you don't want to know. We always said that. But you knew what it meant. Oh yeah. So yeah, but it, we just didn't want to say it. You know, what especially you, to somebody like you. If you ask. <laughs> Back in the 80s, what does the NWA mean? You don't want to know. Because <laughs> it was more, you know, it, was, it wasn't a racist, but it was just, it was different. Okay. It what did you think of it? What, what did you personally think of the name? I thought we was crazy. Yeah? <laughs> you know, with niggas with attitude? I mean, that's some, some bold, that's a bold statement right there. I mean, that's a statement that's so far ahead of itself. It's like, wow. I mean, and it, and it probably was just a quick accident. I think Yomo came up with NWA and somebody else, Dre or somebody, put the niggas with attitude with it. And it's just like, just simple. Because most big stuff is simple. Yeah. Very simple. Okay. So, fuck the police. Yep. Who put that together? Um, well, you know, it's something that everybody wanted to say. Everybody. I don't care who they are. I always want to turn around and point a finger at the cops. Okay. We just got bold enough to do it. We never thought it was going to do anything because it was cussing, you know, talking mess, but it just, it just happened. And it didn't take long to happen. A day or so to make it a song. Who uh, put it together? Um, Dre, Dre came up with, you know, the beats on that, and then we just all put the commercials, you know, we all got together, put the commercials, and everybody went and wrote their parts, you know, and then it just, it just came together so simple. It was something that we knew about. Okay. We could talk about honestly, you know. Yeah. It didn't happen to us. Okay. So, for example, what was the worst experience you ever had with the police, personally? On the day, um, our first photo shoot. Not not that posse one, but the actual real one, because Q wasn't there. The one with the Straight Outta Compton photo shoot? Not even that one. It was before that. Our first 8x10 one we did. Okay. And it was, I remember, I got pulled out the car, face down, arrested. <laughs> you know, cops, we do it, they do it all the time. You know, just pull you over. I remember even in the wrecking crew towards the end, we standing outside Alonzo's house. Cops just come up. Who car is this? Because I was in a, a big Lincoln, a, you know, a girl was renting cars for me. And he said, you driving to get in the police, get in the car. And just took me away. With no questions, no nothing. Okay. I mean, they, this happened all the time in the ghetto. All, I mean, it ain't just Compton. Everywhere. All across the country. You know, the cops was just something else. Not all the cops. It's just them few. Okay. You know, everything got a few of something in it. Sure. And they just, you know, harass you search you, throw you on the ground, and then let you go. Hmm. You know, just to be... Because they can. Yeah, because they got the power. And there's no repercussions for it. Yep. How, how bad was the gang situation in Compton when you were growing up? Not that bad. Not that bad? Because only certain people was in the gang when I grew up. And even when the Wrecking Crew and the early NWA days, there was only certain people was in the group. The whole city wasn't a gang. Yeah. You know, you have red here, blue there, but you know who's in the game because they dress okay. like it. Nowadays, everybody looks like they're in the game, but that's just a tire now. Okay. But back then, you knew them was a gang, them people not. You know, you could just okay. tell the look. But was anyone in, in the in, in NWA gang related? No. No, no. No, we nobody. were lived in gang neighborhoods, right. but we weren't in the gang. Okay, so no, no one was a gang. Yeah, nobody a, was a. So actual, even, yeah. even Easy was, was not gang affiliated? I mean, he lived in the neighborhood. He did his thing with the streets, selling drugs, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. But far, I don't think actually being in the gang, no. no. I mean, he know all the people from the gang. Right. Hang out with them, but okay. actually being a member, I don't know, maybe maybe when he was younger. Maybe. Maybe. Well, um, how big of a drug dealer did he get? Like, was he like kilos, like that type of thing? or was I he... don't think, I don't know. I, I doubt it. I don't think so. But enough to keep him fresh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know, making money and 
you know, I think it came more when his cousin died and left him a big stash or something. Ah. That might have been probably about the biggest. But, okay. you know, he was always in it, you know, doing his thing, selling and all that. So, But he was rolling. Right. You know, I had a couple of cars and, you know, stuff like that. So. It was all cocaine back then or, or was it during the crack era? It had to be the crack era. Yeah, it had to be okay. crack. Yeah. No, I feel you. Okay, so you guys put together Fuck the Police. Mm-hmm. I mean... To me, as a hip hop fan at that time, that was huge. Yeah, I mean that was bold. I mean that was, it was like bold. No, no rap group had ever said that before. Never. <laughs> I don't know anybody that said that. Maybe a Richard Pryor record or something. And he, they didn't even go that, you know, deep to it. Yeah. I mean, we did something. That's what I'm saying. We did something that everybody wanted to say. Okay. But they just, you didn't have the balls to say it. Okay. Especially not to a cop. <laughs> okay. So what was it like dealing with law enforcement being the fuck the police group? Well, it wasn't that bad when we made it. But once it got out there and then the FBI, that's what made it totally different. You know, that's what, that's what made it big. Because the FBI sent us a letter that we can't say that. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. And then another agency sends them a letter, you know, <laughs> tell them, you know telling them that they can't do that because they are Fifth, or fifth Amendment fifth or whatever. Amendment. You know, whatever it is. Yeah. But, Interesting. But yeah, the FBI is the one that blew it up. By them trying to stop it. Yeah. It was, it was counter That's what, just like the MTV ban in the video. That made it just, boom. Everyone wanted to see the video yeah. that you can't watch on MTV. Yep. <laughs> okay. Was there a- any actual problems, though, with the FBI or law enforcement? Well, I know our tour, we couldn't do the song. Oh, really? We were told not to do the song. You know. Or what? We couldn't get the building. You know, or the uh. insurance wouldn't cover it. Ah, or something okay. like that. So we were, we did not do the song on the tour, except in Detroit. <laughs> the one time. <laughs> That's it. What happened in Detroit? They ran us off that stage. <laughs> Who, the police? Oh, yeah. So you started doing Fuck the Police. We didn't even get, Q wasn't even at the end of his verse. <laughs> <laughs> they ran us out of that city. <laughs> All they did was give us a ticket. Okay. You know, a citation, some $80 ticket or something, but... That was the only time we ever played that song in the tour. We was told we could not play it. Okay. Or we couldn't get no insurance and stuff like that. At the height of Straight Outta Compton, mm-hmm. you know, um, that album went how many times platinum? Well, back then it was double, but you know, since then it's all way more. But right. back then, double platinum was huge. Was a very big deal. Yeah. yeah. Especially so no first, radio play, no radio no, play, <laughs> first album. Yeah. You know, uh, oh, yeah. I mean, because that. That made the second album, and I, if I'm not mistaken, the second album is the only one that came in at number one. Right, yeah. The Straight of Compton kind of bubbled. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, but I, that, I, the other one came in at number right. one. Okay, so, so Straight of Compton comes out. Mm-hmm. You know, what do you think was your greatest memory from that, from that time? What was um, the, or the craziest story or, or whatever It had else? to be the tour. The tour. You know, 40 dates, 40 girls. You know, 40 plus girls, rather. <laughs> oh, yeah, a city is a girl a night. You know, that's just how it was. Yeah. You know, that was two months, you know. And everybody that was on the tour always said, even to this day, that was the best tour. Because it was, you know, nowadays tours are totally different. And stuff, but it was a real tour. You know, especially for a hip-hop group. Yeah. You know, Run DMC was already doing it. But from the West Coast, somebody, it was unheard of. Okay. And we the only ones. Because you guys were going on tour with East Coast artists, right? Yeah. Salt and Pepper was supposed to go, but she got she was pregnant. One of them was pregnant, okay. and they didn't go. Kid and play, and you know. And then we hooked up with LL, certain shows, you mm-hmm. know. So that's what I'm saying. A West Coast group, you know, there was no West Coast group. I mean, we the only ones that got from the West that got into Apollo. Yeah. We didn't get booed, but <laughs> you know, we didn't get a big clap, but. <laughs> Okay. We got into Apollo. Even in Washington D.C., you know that's, you know that's East Coast, but they accepted us for some reason. Sure. We like opened the doors for the East. Nobody else was getting in in the East. Okay. So, the tour finishes. The album is heading towards double platinum. Yeah. Ice Cube decides to leave. Yeah. Ice Cube, from what I've read. I guess felt like he wasn't being compensated properly oh, for, I for mean, all the work that he put. Yeah, in. detail. I don't know, you know, 
That I don't know, but you know, he just left. He wasn't forced to leave. No, he left on his own. So you know. So he didn't have a, a contract. Already? Nobody had contracts. At first. Nobody had contracts. Yeah. But even with Jerry Heller in the mix. Not until during the tour. That's when we got contracts. This was after the album came out. Oh yeah. That seems really strange. Oh yeah. I mean, you know, you got young kids. That's the thing. Right. But you got Jerry Heller. Yeah. No, I'm just saying you got young kids that don't know no better. You know, we was young. We don't know contract. We don't know about all this stuff. Publishing and producers, writers, you know, all this stuff. Okay. When, you, when you're young, you don't know nothing. Well, from, from, from what I've read, I guess at that point, everyone was given contracts. Yeah. And everyone signed except for, for yeah. uh, Ice Cube. Oh, yeah. So Ice Cube basically was, he, had, he wasn't under contract. Oh, yeah. Boom. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, well, okay. So how did you guys feel when Ice Cube decided to leave? Because Ice Cube was a very key member in this group. Um, we did all something, you know, so funny. We never talked about it. Really? No, we didn't. I mean, we wasn't mad or, you know, it just happened. You know, just like, okay, you know, he left. And it wasn't no talking, no mess. You know, we, it was nothing like that. It was just, it's just like it just, he went his way. Okay. But we were still here. The okay. group didn't fizzle away. No, it didn't. And then um, the 100 Miles of Running, yeah, the EP. Uh, EP came out, and the Ice Cube thing was addressed. Oh, yeah. On that EP. So, obviously, people felt some type of way about it. I mean, that was after the, uh, MT, the, uh, the you know, the little D Barnes thing with the video, letting him come on right before us. Explain that situation. It was a, I forgot the name of the show. So, but there, there was a, and the host was D Barnes. Yeah, there was right. a video show, yeah. A video show, okay. You know... I guess she let him say something, but they edited it right before our part, you know, on the, you know, because those, I think we was hosting the whole show, but he ended up saying something, I can't remember what it was, but something right before one of our, and it, it was about in WA? Yeah. So, so, something so, so, about so. Busters, Hunter, whatever, I can't remember the word, but, okay. so that was like, oh, okay, wait a minute. So he said something about. That we didn't know about until we seen the oh, show Oh, until on it got TV. aired. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> So Ice Cube kind of took the first shot. I don't know if it was taking the first shot, but it was made to look like a first shot. Well, I mean, the way he, the made they edited. I know. mean, if Ice Cube, he said, didn't say F in the, he didn't say it wasn't nothing like that. It well, was just something kind of simple, but it was put in edited where you know it looked like more than what it was. So that's because oh, he said something derogatory, and then they showed you guys right afterwards. Yeah, so. yeah. So you know, just they okay, they got set up. <laughs> okay. And, and is that what led to the, the Dre incident with, with D. Barnes? Yeah, that's what led, you know, to all that and then, you know, the songs and then back and forth, you know. Okay, and, and I guess D. Barnes got kicked down some stairs? Or? I, don't, I don't even I know. Don't know. I wasn't there. So you weren't there? I don't want to know. <laughs> you don't want to know. Fair enough. Okay, so once that happened, you guys decided to take the first shot in a song oh, yeah. against Ice Cube. Oh, yeah. What, uh... There's something about Benedict Arnold. Yeah. A few little things. You know, I don't talk about that stuff no more. You know, okay. Just, okay. You know. well, so, so you guys took some shot, shots at Ice Cube yeah. at the time. Um, what, did you, were you guys seeing Ice Cube at all after that? Oh, no. No, no. Never, not since the tour. Not since the tour. Yeah. Okay. We didn't see him at all, didn't talk, you know, none okay. of that. Okay. 100 Miles and Running, I thought was brilliant. Yeah. By the way, uh, I feel like people forget about that project. Yeah. I but mean, it was I, just like... From the straight out of Compton, it's just yeah. like we grew up a little more. Yeah. Like, Got a little older. Like, personally, I actually liked that project more than the second album. Oh, okay. Just me personally. Yeah. You know, because I, 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 th- I thought, you know. Yeah. Uh, like, what, what was that one song? Um, she Swallowed It? She Swallowed It. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant song. <laughs> wow. Got slack about that one, too. I bet. <laughs> I bet. And well, because originally, well, you know, it was a sample on that song. Herbie Hancock. Okay. He called us in the studio and said we couldn't use them. <laughs> and me and Dre looked at each other like, okay. He called. If, Little, while think, you were making that before it even came out. Well, well, we had made it. Then I guess they let him hear, you know, trying to get the sample. Oh, right. And he said no. And no. He said hell <laughs> he no. He called us personally. Interesting. <laughs> I was looking right at Dre. He was like, I'm like, okay, then we had, you know, had to play the music, you know, took out the sample and stuff. Okay. Because it sounded totally different. 
And, you know, like, I believe on that album, it was kind of addressing the whole FBI thing. I mean, 100 Miles and Running was about yeah. the FBI oh, yeah. and stuff like that. Um, but ultimately, nothing really happened with you guys. No one got arrested. No oh, one no, got charged. No, uh-uh, nothing. No. But, but we it was, was... It was a great promo. We our rights, you know. Yeah. Freedom of speech is what they would say. Yeah. Right. Um, did No Vaseline came out before the second NWA album? Yeah, I think it had to. Okay. It had to come out after the 100 Miles of Running. Okay. Yeah, it had to. So, what did you think when you first heard No Vaseline? Mm, I thought it was cool. You know, that's the thing about it. Nobody really got mad. He was just like, okay, he got us on that one. That's all, you know, I even told Cube this a couple of months ago. I said, you got, you, you got us. Right. You know, that's it. You know, we didn't like, oh, man, nah. Nah, it was... I mean, you were mentioned on it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Then, I mean, uh, you know, yellow, you're losing you, all Yeah, that. yellow on your team, so you're losing. <laughs> Yo, Dre, I saying, I stick you, to producing. You got it. So, hey. Were you and Q close at all at one point? Oh, yeah. Early, you know, we, you know. Yeah. It's like me and Dre was the closest. Yeah. Out of the whole thing. But every once, you know, every once you get close with Ren for a little while, Q for a little while, me and Eric, you know, it's just yeah. different phases and stuff. Okay. So... No Vaseline comes out, and you know, everyone considered a strong, a yeah. strong disc record. Oh yeah. Um, you guys still weren't running into into Cube at no. all, or nothing mm-hmm. else like that. I mean, but not even at award shows or no, events not, or not nothing. us. No, no, not the group. No, not the group. Okay. Um, was there ever talk of of Cube coming back to NWA during that time, or was it totally like? Um. I would say more, well, not really. Maybe after the second album. Okay. So the second album comes out. Yeah. The, the For Life record. Yeah. The For Life album. Um, what was it like creating a, you know, you know, like the a second album? You know, this time without Ice Cube and so forth. I mean, because the EP came out. Yeah. You know, but I kind of felt like the EP sonically sounded like straight out of Compton, whereas... Yeah. The, the second album had its own kind of yeah, sound. Yeah, it kind of... More synthesizers and the, more, you know... the G-Funk. The G-Funk. That's what it was. I exactly. mean, but it was like we really grew up. Because this, to me, the first album is better because of what it was. But sounding-wise, musically-wise, the last album is better. Okay. Musically-wise, way, 100% better. But Straight Outta Compton was more popular. Because I guess it's the beginning, yeah. really. But the the last album was stronger, the songs was better, but it just straight out of Compton was a better album, even though musically it wasn't. Okay. Cause we you know we used samples and not much, but the the last album really got into the sound of the and it was a great sound. Yeah. The sound was great. You guys dissed Ice Cube on that album. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was it? Uh, what, what's the song? I was speaking to your bitch O'Shea, like yeah. the, all that stuff. <laughs> Always into something, yeah. Always into something. There we go. I was trying to remember the, the, yeah. the name of the song. They just, you know, I don't, I don't even talk about them. You know, I ain't that this stuff. I, I just stay away. Okay, fair I enough. Just, but the, the, it was always on record, though. No one ever got into brawls or, no, or anything no, else like no, that. No, we never I, met up. None of not us. You know, not the group and him. No. Okay. Maybe some else stuff happened, but not with the group. No. Okay. Okay. That album came out, it went how many times platinum? It had to go double. Double platinum. You know, and it came out in number one, you know, okay. ship number one. Okay. Which is, I think to this day is rare. Yeah. Very rare. For hip hop. Yeah, no, I, I remember I remember that album. It was yeah, that was in my car for, for <laughs> months and months. Um so what really happened after that? Because at one point Dre wanted to leave. Mm-hmm. Well, that's when it, when that album, when we finished mixing that album, the group was over. Really? Yeah. The group was done. Why? It was just, it just dissolved. Why? Dre went his way, and that was it. The group was over. But Dre was still under contract. Oh, I don't know about, you know, contract. Yeah. Yeah, but, but the group was over. When we mixing it, the group was, after it was mixed, the group was over. Basically. I mean, but there was, but there was still, we did there the, was videos. We still did the videos, but it was just about over, really. 
Really? Yeah. Huh, I, I never knew that. Yeah, nobody never knew that. Nobody <laughs> never knew that. Okay. Yeah, but the group was, it was basically, it wasn't officially over, but it was, it was over. Because what happened, we were supposed to do another tour. Right. And, you know, our manager, I ain't saying no names, got greedy. You talking about Jerry Heller? I ain't saying no names. Okay. <laughs> got greedy. You know, wanting to do stadiums or something like this, you know. That's what helped us fall apart. We didn't do that last tour. Well, why, why not do stadiums? NWA was, I mean, huge, was huge at that time. Yeah, but I think still arenas was better. Or whatever it was, it was, you know, asking too much money. You know, whatever the reason why we didn't do it. Okay. It's a shame that we didn't do that. But Yeah. It was, it was amazing. That we did. So, so had you done the tour, and it, it might have been a different thing. Interesting. Maybe. Okay. So at one point, Dre want to leave. Yeah. No, you Dre and, didn't want to leave. He left. Dre left. <laughs> um, you and Dre, you know, you said you were, the, you know, the closest yeah. of the two. Why didn't you go with Dre? You know something? He asked me too. Really? I have not answered him yet. <laughs> hey Dre, remember that uh I have not that death row deal you yeah. offered me back then? I just never I just never answered. I just Really? So so Dre wanted you to go so did he tell you like, hey, I'm about to start death row and no, I he got just said I'm fin- he said I'm leaving. You wanna come I'm with thinking, me? I'm thinking, where are you leaving? <laughs> and that was it, you know. I said, I'll let you know. I have not let him know yet. So but and now I just never answered. So you ultimately stayed with Easy. Yeah. Okay. And Ren was still there. Ren was kind of gone too. Ren was gone. Just yeah, it was no more. But didn't didn't Ren come out with an album on? Well, he, he was still on Ruthless, but you know, the well, the group was broke up, so you know everybody was solo. Okay. But I was just with E. You know, I was with Eric. So, and then we started. Then he did a couple of EPs or stuff. I didn't do the first EP. The 5150 or whatever that name of that EP. I didn't touch that one. <laughs> and then, you know, his other EP, you know, then the diss songs coming, you know. But you know, I wasn't in the video. He didn't ask me to be in the video because he knew I wouldn't be in it. Okay. No, I'm not going to diss him. No, nope. he knew that. So mm-hmm. that's why he didn't come to me about that, that song. Right, because were you and Dre still cool or did you guys yeah. kind of stop talking at that point? We just haven't seen each other. Okay. But we were still cool. You know, there was no problem, but we just have not seen each other. Just like... Me and Cube, we just didn't see each other. I okay. didn't talk to Cube again to after Eric's death. That was the first time I talked to him since 89. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Okay, so Easy's kind of doing his own thing. Mm-hmm. Death Row comes out. Did you know Sugar at all? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He was around towards, because he was DLC's bodyguard, so. Right. Yeah, he so, was DOC's bodyguard. Yeah. Okay. He was around right toward the ending of that album, the second album, the mixing time. Okay. Because the DOC went with Dr. Dre. Yeah. Yeah, th- those two. Now, was that before or after DOC's accident? That was after his accident. He so, had already had, because he was supposed to go on tour that next morning. And he was at a video shoot. Right, because he had his own album that came out. Yeah. Great album, by the way. Oh, yeah. It was a no, great, no great better. album. He would have been a big artist. Yeah. The accident. Yeah. I mean, I had heard he fell asleep behind the wheel. Fell asleep. Been wow. up all night, drunk probably. But he fell asleep, went across the freeway, and came out the car and hit a, the tree hit his neck. So that crushed his vocal cords. Right. And then at that point, he, he had a, a rasp voice. Yeah, that was voice it. But he for, could still write. He but he write. was, even on the second album, yeah, he had already had the accident doing the second album. Sure right, because I think he, he had like a little... Yeah, like a he little, didn't rap on it. You know, he didn't rap on it, but he wrote. Interesting. So who was he writing for? I mean, everybody wrote Easy's part. He wrote some of Easy's parts on Straight Outta Compton album. Hmm. Yeah. Well, Eric liked his writing style. Okay. It was totally, you know, a totally different style. He wrote, sure. he, he wrote quite a bit. So, so DOC went with Dre. Yeah. Okay. What was DOC? I mean, under what well, under contract still or? or oh, still, I don't know. No, that no. I don't know. Okay. I'm quite sure he probably still was, but he okay. can't do no more albums. But I'm quite sure he still was under contract. Um, you know, when you, when you look at this whole breakup thing, you know, when you know Ice Cube blamed Jerry Heller 
for the breakup. I mean, <laughs> always the outsider. The outsider broke up the group. You feel that, the same way. It's exactly that's what happened. The group didn't break up itself. It's outsiders. Whoever the other people, whatever, you know, for whatever reason, that's what broke the group up. The group didn't go in there, I hate you. I, no, we never had no So argument. people are getting in other people's ears. That's what it is. Outsiders. And they would and come that's in. all I got to say about that. <laughs> but that's what did it. It's that's the what outsiders. Did it. Okay. Not the group. What did you think about the, you know, Dre's Chronic album? It was good. Great. Great. I mean, it was great. I mean, you know, got new rappers and it was just great. There's nothing else to be said about it. All the stuff he'd been doing was great. He, he never dissed you on that album. No. Nah. No. We still was we still but you know till this day, you know we you guys are still friends. Yeah, still long time friends. Oh, okay, yeah. that's why when Eric did the diss song, he he knew not to ask. He didn't even you, ask. you didn't want to get involved in it. No, nah. right. So, so Suge was DOC's bodyguard. Yeah, and um, once Dre decided to leave, how did how did Suge go from bodyguard to? Now that I don't know. No idea. <laughs> Guess he just like a magician or something. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, and I don't want to know. <laughs> okay. Do you know anything about the the situation um, when Easy signed away Dre's rights, and then nah, the next day? Nah, I mean, not really. You know, I just didn't get involved in the drama. I stayed away. I just I didn't want to know about. It. He didn't talk to me about it. Easy never talked to you about it. No. Nah. Okay. So you know. Whatever happened, happened. You know, I don't know. I know just as much as you know. <laughs> I got you. So, at, at this point, you know, Death Row is heating up. Yeah. You know, the chronic, doggy style. You yeah. know, it's like it was, it's essentially, the, there were the new NWA in terms of like the oh, yeah. attention oh, yeah. on that, that genre of music. Oh, yeah. Um, you dropped an album. Mm-hmm. Ren dropped an album. Easy dropped a couple albums. Yeah, none of them were like through the roof. Nah. like to the to the NWA caliber. Yeah, yeah no, no, no. Right uh -uh. Uh, until Bo Bone Thugs and Harmony showed up. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I you, remember you, meeting them, me and Eric. Okay, we met them in Cleveland. I'm like, who was these characters? <laughs> <laughs> then by the time we got back off the road trip, they was in L.A. I'm like, what is? Why are they here? Because <laughs> they were just singing, rapping. I'm like, what is? You know, it's the first, you know, it was new. Just like when we came out, it was new. So that's why they caught on. Exactly right. Because they wasn't like trying to be us or, you know, like all this. No, they were yeah, they thugs talk. singing. So it was totally different. New style, new sound. You know, I did, you know, a couple of things on there. So it just was a whole new thing. Sure. Um, did you expect them to blow as big as they got? Nah. Uh-uh. I mean, even when we they put out the first little EP, they did triple platinum. Yeah. And then the other stuff going ten million or whatever it went. Yeah. You know the crossroads and stuff like that. So, I mean, they were just like us, just different styles. Yeah. They came out ahead of the game, way before everybody started doing it. You know, everybody started biting their style. Yeah, everyone started singing and oh yeah, double time. Oh, yeah. But that, that but that's how you got to come out. Just like when Run DMC came out, it was sure. Totally new. You know, I, I remember hearing a, a story about how, you know, sort of at the height of like all the disses between Easy and Ice Cube, I had heard that they actually ran into each other a couple times. I think and they, like, they ran in New York, you know, but like, nothing happened. Nothing happened. Man. Each time, like, you know, I'm not going to say where the story came from, yeah. you know, but it was like, I'd heard, you know, they ran into each other and Easy put his hand out and Cube gave a pound oh, and yeah. they kind of kept it going. Like, yeah. I mean, was, they, after. After Dre was gone, closer to when he was dying, you know, they, they end up talking and talking about doing something together. Oh, really? So, oh, yeah, all that. All that came. So were they actually talking about an NWA reunion? Maybe. We, maybe they was trying. You know, talking, you know, at the very beginning talking, so. Okay. There wasn't no, I don't want to see you, don't let him in, you know, nah. Okay. Uh -uh. The diss songs came out, they was over. That's uh, it. Sure. Easy announced that he had, he had AIDS. Yeah. Well, um, he didn't announce it. Who announced it? The uh, lawyer announced it. The lawyer it. announced it. Yeah. He didn't act. He didn't say that. <laughs> Did you know about his situation before they announced it? 
I knew about it. Yeah, before it, because they, I remember, I knew it. Matter of fact, the rumors got around before that. Yeah, people was leaking it that was working. Right, but there, in the but there's, there's rumors about people having AIDS. Yeah, all I mean, the time. but like you know, that's why I said I heard the the rumor first. Okay. Until somebody came and told me, but I heard the rumors first. Okay. It was crazy. I mean, that's why I said it was on the street before. Sure. Before it happened, I'm just like okay. wow. So did you and him talk about it? Nope, he didn't want to talk to me about it. And I talked to him on the phone when he was in the hospital, not the Cedars, but the first hospital he was in. Okay. We talked on the phone. He said, watch yourself. I'm like, what are you talking about? You know, and I was at his house shooting a film. He said, watch yourself. I said, okay. You know, we didn't talk too much. You know, I, was, and I wasn't expecting that to be the last time I talked to him. But that yeah, was, he didn't tell me he had it. No. But that was the last time you talked to him? Yeah. And he said, watch yourself. Yep. Oh, he said, be, you know, watch, you know, like, be careful with the, in other words, he was telling me, be careful with the girls. Sure. But he didn't say it. He didn't want me to know. I mean, how many girls was, was Easy really running through at his, in his heyday? Was I it mean, like... me and him was neck and neck <laughs> for a while. So, so what does that mean? <laughs> Five was, girls a day? Ten girls nah, a day? No, I doubt it. You know, <laughs> different. Maybe one or two a day. Maybe sometime one a week. You know, one a day. Different. You know, every day a different girl. Okay. Or something. You know, it was a lot of girls, but... Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, I talked to Easy Son. Mm-hmm. A, a little easy. Um, and he he felt that the Easy didn't just die of AIDS like that. There's there too many questions. Like, for example, no one around him got it. Not his his yeah. his wife, his kids, nothing. Um, you know. Usually AIDS is a very, you know, HIV and AIDS is a slow process. He just, it was announced and then boom, he was, yeah. he was gone right away. Like, you know, he felt that he may have been, you know, someone killed him, maybe injected oh, him or something. I mean, you know, you know some, yeah, you never know, you know. You never know. All we know is he died from that, you know. He had it, you know, he was diagnosed with it, but we don't know if somebody gave it to him, or, you know, feel, you know, Put it in a serene, you know, whatever. We don't know. We no. never know. So we'll never know. So we just have to accept what it is. And, okay. You know, it's over. You know, it's over. It's twenty years ago. I mean, how did you feel when you when you heard the news? I mean, it was different, a shock. But like the music, like just went out of me. I didn't. I didn't even do music no more. I was like done. I'm like, okay. Really? Cool. Oh yeah. You just didn't want to do music. Yeah, after. I didn't, even, didn't have no effort to do music. None. At all. What, when you've been doing music your whole life? Yeah. I was just, just done that, just like that. I ain't did mu- music since. Hmm. Yeah. I'm just starting to get back into the DJing, and I'm starting to get back my old passion I used to have. Sure. But yeah, yeah the music, that's, that's deep. Yeah. It, had, it had died. It just wasn't in me no more. We did it. We got big. You know, we did all the stuff. What, um, you were the only one that showed up to the funeral out of the group. Yeah. <laughs> that, that seems kind of strange. I mean, I mean, some people probably just can't take it. Couldn't, you know, actually take it. You never know. You know, I don't know what the reasons they are. We never talked about it, even to this day. Did, that, that subject can never get talked about. Did, did, did Cube, Cube and Dre show up at the, at the hospital? They all showed up at the hospital, yeah. Okay, you showed up at the hospital? Yeah, I went to the hospital, too. Dre came a little bit before me hour or so before me okay and q made it made it came earlier that day okay yeah. but you guys didn't actually no we didn't see each other no uh-uh. interesting oh yeah did you was he still talking no nah, when i seen him he was already in a coma or not coma uh what you call they put him in a coma so he won't uh, move. induced induced, induced coma. yeah you went into the porn business yeah so when easy college you said be careful you said you were filming a movie was this a I porn was movie oh yeah so, at his house. Right? At his house. So, yeah. wow, the irony of this situation. I started actually probably about 93, maybe late 92. Dre was already going out the group. Okay. That's when I started doing the movie. I did the movie for 15 years or something like that. Okay. Oh, yeah. Four, three, four hundred movies and stuff. Yellow was doing porno. He went to my studio to do his porno. Right. Uh, my, that's, my studio got so much DNA in it, it's a damn shame. 
Um, so he was using my studio. So Easy was looking to invest in the porno business with Yella. Okay. So he would come by here and watch him do sessions, and we sit out and kick it. What made you get into the, the porn business? Somebody came, bring the idea to me. I said, okay, I just go buy the equipment. You know, I I jumped into it like doing records. You know, records, producer, you do everything. So I jumped in there, going to buy the camera, going to buy editing equipment, you know, everything. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do this like a business. And that's what I jumped in. I didn't jump in it for the girls. No, nah, I jumped in it for the business. Okay. Oh, but, yeah. but the girls were a side effect. You know, there was a, you know, a couple of, what you call desserts every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> I must not lie. <laughs> but I was, it was very rare. Very yeah, rare. So, so you were, you know, because I mean, you see, you know, you see guys like T.T. Boy. Yeah. You know what I mean? That was around during that time also. And he mm-hmm. would mess with all the girls. Oh, yeah. You know, he, 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 he was, I think he told me that uh, he messed with 10,000. Oh, he I, had sex with like 10,000 uh, women. <laughs> okay, so let's so say 60 s- girls a month. Six, 720, right? Times 12. Right, and how many years I've been in the business? So that puts me, really, it could put me at 15,000 or more. At that rate, you'd be at 19,440 girls. Right. <laughs> me, you know, I, I, I just filmed them, took the pictures, edited it, and stuff like okay. that. Okay. So I was the company. I wasn't right. in the movie. Sure. <laughs> you might have seen my hand every once in a while. <laughs> okay. But that's about it. <laughs> okay. So, so you're filming a porno at Easy es house. Yeah. And he, he calls you. Yeah. Tells you to be careful. I mean, he called, he did, we talked he, for a minute, for a couple of seconds. Because I had just seen him earlier that year in January when we went to Vegas. That was the last time we was on, went somewhere together, a trip together. And so funny, that was the first and only time we ever stayed in a room together because Vegas was sold out for the convention. Mm. And we had never stayed in a room with him. Right. And that was the first time. And then a couple of months, like March, I think it was, that's when we, he talked to me in the, you know, when he was in the hospital. So... Yeah, you know, we said a couple of words, some I forgot what it was. Then he said, watch yourself. I said, okay. You know, he didn't say why, watch yourself, but he sure said it. He said, watch yourself. You think if he didn't tell you that, you might have moved a little differently? Or if you didn't mm. see that? Not really. Not really. I, I didn't know what he was talking about until after he died. Yeah. Then I was like, or after he, it came out. You know, I mean, at the time... Still to this day somewhat, but definitely at the time, you know, before Magic announced it, mm-hmm. before Easy Situation, it was just known as a gay disease. Yeah, right? yeah, that's what... If you're gay, you go get it. If you're straight, yeah, no matter that's what who, everybody you, thought. Can, you can fuck everyone as long as, you know what I mean? That's what everybody thought. Yeah. <laughs> do you, what do you think is the impact of, of Easy dying from that? Um, it might have opened a few eyes, you know, might have slowed a few people down. I'm quite sure it did. It's, you know, yeah. because when Magic got it, Magic was more like on a pedestal, you ain't going to see Magic, you ain't going to be around Magic, but when he got it, because yeah. he still come to the neighborhood and stuff, it was like, it kind of opened our, the ghetto eyes up a little bit, you know, like, whoa, yeah. he's on our level, you know, and, and he got it, and so it might have, it might have slowed a few people down, I think. Hopefully it did. Are you involved in the NWA movie? Yeah, I'm a consultant. A consultant? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, so, and there's someone playing you? Oh, yeah. A guy named Neil Brown. And it's so funny. He looks like me 25 years ago. It just, you know, when I met him, you know, we talking, and he just, Neil Brown Jr. Man. Let me take a look at this guy. Okay. You can see that, you know? Yeah. I mean, you know, once he's dressed up in costume, oh, yeah. He, 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 and he's, a, but he's a good actor, though. Okay. I mean, he played the part. Played a great part. No, yeah. I've seen the whole movie. I've you, seen all that. So you've seen the whole movie now? Oh, yeah. The, 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 the final the final. Well, it's not cut. the final, but I've seen the... It's close to it. Yeah, it's got to be chopped down a little bit, but... Okay. It looks, it looks better than I thought. It looks great. Because, you know, the Biggie movie came out, and it was a cool movie at the time. Did you, you see the trailer? Yeah, I saw it. Yeah. You can't yeah. always tell from the trailer. Though. Yeah. You can't oh, yeah. always tell. I, I never judge a movie based on the yeah. trailer. But, like, like, what I was saying is the Biggie movie came out... Mm-hmm. There was a big fuss over it. It came out, it wasn't a bad movie, mm-hmm. but you don't see people talking about the Biggie movie. Anymore. Yeah. It kind of came and went. Yeah. You know. This one. This you know, one. You get 22 million views in 24 hours. <laughs> I'm just like, wow. 
<laughs> I was surprised. Wait, 22 million? Wow. <laughs> so F. Gary Gray did his thing on this movie. Oh, yeah. It, it, I mean, I'm looking at it being shot. I'm looking at it being edited, you know, mm-hmm. and, and I know the story. Yeah. And, it, you know, looks great. I mean, it looks huge. You know, it looks grand. You know, it just, yeah. it, it's, it's a great well, movie. Well, I think Cube and uh, Dre are executive producers. Right? Yeah, or producers. Producers. I don't think they're executives. Okay. Yeah. There is a, a Suge Knight character in the movie. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. You heard about what happened with Suge? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was there the day before. Yeah. You were there, there the day before? Yeah. What's your take on this whole thing? You know, it's, it's nothing new. <laughs> nothing new. All a person had to do was just not come by. <laughs> right, because the story is that he had come by to discuss. I mean, yeah, I, you know, whatever it was, but you just shouldn't have came by. That's all. You, you wouldn't be in this mess. Right. Uh, Dre and, and Sugar are not friends. I, I doubt it. <laughs> I, don't, I wouldn't know, but I'm quite sure they're not. They, they are not friends. There, okay. There's been, you know, like the vibe awards and stuff like that. There's yeah. been a bunch of a bunch of bad oh, experiences yeah. o- o- over the thing. Um, do you have a relationship with Sugar at all? Nope. No. Nope. I mean, I, I knew, I've seen him a few times, and that's it. Yeah. I don't want to know what you do. I don't care. Ain't got nothing to do with me. Okay. <laughs> See, I, I stay out of drama. Do you know the other guys involved in the whole? Did you know Terry? Uh-uh. Or uh, Bone? Nah, I didn't know. No. I met him. I mean, I met him, but that's about it. Okay. I don't know him personally. But, but, but from your point of view, Suge was not welcome on that set. He should not have come. I mean, you know, quite sure he wasn't, but, you know, why be there? So that's the only thing I can say about it. Well, you know, Dre and Cube did Natural Born Killer. Yeah. Off of the Murder Was a Case soundtrack. There was, there was talks of like an NWA reunion. I mean, that was Cube songs. You know, it wasn't a re- NWA. It just no, the, 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 there was a song. Hello. Hello. Chin check. Chin check. Oh. So you see these little spatterings of yeah. NWA. But it wasn't. It was. It just they happened to be in on the song, be in a video. But it wasn't officially a NWA song. It's Cube songs. Okay. I mean, you know, why not have a couple of the ex members? You know that you guys haven't. Did songs together in 15 years. You know, why not? But it wasn't an official NWA. People just made it into that. Okay. Do you ever see that happening? You know something? You never know what's coming. Notice I said, you never know what's coming. Because, <laughs> you know, the movie's going to come out and there's going to be a whole bunch of you attention. You never know what's coming. On NWA. You're not going to get me to bite. <laughs> <laughs> but I put it like this. Get ready. Okay. Well, you know, when, when there was these different projects with yeah. different members of NWA, were you ever part of any of these things? Nah. I was doing my porn. I wasn't thinking about that. <laughs> he was doing your I porn. I was, Dre, I remember Dre when he did Up in Smoke to he'd come down to rehearsals and come. I was doing porn. I oh, really? So, so you just turned it all down? Yeah, I wasn't even, I mean, it just, I just never got back to, you know, he called me and, okay, I'll come. I never came. Huh. I just kept on doing my thing. You know, I'm making five movies a month, so I ain't got time. Okay. And, and you know, these days the porn industry is, is fucked up. Because oh, yeah. I, I, got, I, I left that a few yeah. years ago. Yeah. Yeah. But back then, I know people were buying Bentleys and all types of shit <laughs> off, off their porn money. <laughs> West Coast Productions. Oh, yeah. All these guys were, were definitely oh, yeah. doing well. Um, interesting. Interesting. Okay. So we never know. There might be an NWA You never know. Might be something. Right. You never know. I mean, right. you know. You know, Might be a postcard or something. Because <laughs> DOC still is still, you know, doing his thing. Oh, I mean, yeah. He's every, still everyone, writing with Dre and stuff, so. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. Um, did you work on Detox at all? Uh-uh. So, so you and Dre have not worked on music? Oh, no. No, not all. since 91. Since 91. Since 91. Oh, yeah. Wow. It just, I just, I went into the movies. I wouldn't think about the music. The, the movies was like the beginning of the music when it was fun. You know, no, it wasn't a bunch of, like when we started, it wasn't a bunch of groups. It wasn't a hundred rap groups and, you know, a hundred thousand albums out. You know, it wasn't no competition. Just like the movie. When I got into the movie, it wasn't competition. It wasn't no, 
hip hop flavor in the in the porn game. I brung it there. You know, wasn't nobody even thinking about tapping that market. Sure. I was bold enough to get in it. Because that first sure. few years, I didn't even use my name. I used alias names. <laughs> but you know, I think in two thousand, that's when I just put my start putting my face on the covers and stuff. So Sure. So So what's next for you? Um well, I'm back into my DJ, and I'm going out the country, you know, mm-hmm. Australia and Paris, and I, my passion was DJing. That was my first passion. So you're getting back into it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A bunch of other stuff coming. I mean, it's be, get ready. <laughs> what were the, the big NWA songs that you were, you were responsible for that you, you feel like, you know, you've, you primarily produced? I mean, we were, it was just, it was, every song was me and Dre. Okay. Every song. Whether he did 99 more beats than me, you know, it was just me and him. Okay. All of them. Well, nobody else. Just me and him. All. Every time. So, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to ask any kind of specific questions, but, mm-hmm. you know, for example, I asked uh, Sir Mix a lot, mm-hmm. you know, how well he did with Baby Got Back, you know, and he, he wrote and produced it. Mm-hmm. Um, he had somewhat of an independent situation also. I think mm-hmm. he was with Rick Rubin at the time. He said he made well over $100 million. Oh, off that one song. The NWA didn't. <laughs> well, but I mean, you being so instrumental with yeah. so many so many of the songs. Yeah. Are you, you know, did you continue to like oh, you still, live well and you know, just the publishing? Still getting paid to this day. Okay. Still getting paid to this day. So you good. <laughs> and the movie is restarting it all over again. Yeah. <laughs> so that's going to be a whole nother big can of worms. <laughs> but it's, I mean, it's just, it's different. I mean... I always was in the, just in the cut. Okay. I don't like the, the glamour. I didn't care for all of that. Yeah. <laughs> Never was. That's, even the group wasn't like that. Sure. We went into the glamour stuff. Yeah. Not really. I feel you. We were just laid back. <laughs> but why would Dre put me in it? Okay. I mean, because if they start from where they start from, I was just a quiet girlfriend who... Got beat up and told to sit down and shut up. Me personally, I do as well because I mean, even to this day, none of his kids, none of his baby mamas, his mistresses, anybody, nobody has came up with HIV or nothing like that. So I mean, just just rationally thinking, some some had to go on. <laughs>